Hello my friends, today we are going to talk about font secrets. Might sound like a boring topic, but I'm sure you're going to use text a lot in your photos and affinity photo documents. So there's a lot of interesting, surprising stuff in this video. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria, and let's get started. As you can see here right on this website, fonts is a big and beautiful world with millions of different fonts for every occasion, emotion and use. So it's a really cool topic and there's a lot to know about. And because it is a big topic today, I'm going to speak about the character window and the different choices we have and what they actually mean. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do in here. I'm using a blank canvas with a, a black font on it. So we have high contrast and you can really see what I'm doing. If you want to know how to get the character window, hit Control T on your keyboard or go up here to view and then to studio and select character. So this window is going to pop up. Okay. So in the upper part here, we have some interesting choices. The first one is, um, well, I would use it with a grain of salt. I'm not sure how safe these choices are. The first one is very useful, which is recent. So it shows you a list of the recent fonts you have used. Below that is fixed with PDF web, which probably means web safe and missing. How much you can trust those lists i'm not sure so i would not rely to them on them too much but below that is favorites and that is really cool because up here on the left when you choose your font tool uh, you get here this font list and you can have these favorites by clicking on the heart shape so every time you click a heart shape this will be added to your favorite list and so you can create a custom list of the fonts that you like to work with. So that's very fun and very useful. Below that, let's select the font here real quick. Below that we have the font size or text height as it says here in Affinity Photo. And next to that are font styles that are included with the font. So these are not simulated by the software. They have actually been designed that way um, by the makers of the fonts. As you can see here, Arial has these different choices. It has a regular, which is this one. It has italic, which bends to the right side a little bit. Then we have bold, which is a fat version. Bold italic, which combines bold and italic. And then we have black, which is an even fatter version of the font. Next to that is the font color and the background color. The background color can be useful in some cases. So you can click here and you can choose any kind of color and this will be set as the background of the text. But you see a problem right away and that is that the background is adapted to the font directly and you can't really change the size of the background. So you can see here uh, when I zoom in a little bit, we have these very ugly edges in our text on the background. So that is not very nice. If you want to have a background, I would rather suggest you use a rectangle tool and draw a background behind the text. So you can just pull the layer down here and fill it with a solid color. And so in that way you can really influence where the background should be and how big it should be. That's a much better choice for that. But of course, um, Background gives you a way to make text a lot more readable on very difficult backgrounds in a very fast way if you need it. So you can go just here, click on no color, which is the white line with the red, the red strike through um, to have no background color at all. Below that it says no style. And this is a list of custom styles. I will not go into them today. You can create your custom styles and then apply them here, which can be very useful if you use the same text with the same style settings a lot in different designs or for your customers. So you can save them with your customer name, stuff like that. Um, you have to be a little bit careful here because these styles do not work with all the fonts. So um, this is a little bit tricky and you need to know what you're doing. Below that, we have some interesting choices, which is we can underline the text and even double underline the text, and we can select a color for the underline, which is very nice because this even highlights more that the text is actually underlined. And if you don't want to have an underline, you click here, 
on again no color and no color in this in this case means that it will be set to the same color as the font so it's not invisible as you might um, have guessed the next one is you can have a strike through and a double strike through again with the text uh, sorry with the color for this element separately and of course as you can see here you can set different colors for the underlines and the strike throughs so all of that is pretty useful um, below that now it gets really interesting and this is how you set up text so it actually works in your design and there is some interesting things you might have heard before for example kerning which is an interesting thing and we will look at that on a different font example like this one and kerning is the diff uh, the the space between two individual fonts so you can see here if i click here and this word by the way it says free it's maybe a little bit hard to read but you can see that the r in free is um there is a gap between the f and the r and we can change that by changing the kerning just for these two fonts the other fonts will stay in the same relation to each other so that's pretty important and you have several ways to do that um, so you can either select for from the list here pre-select as you can see this is already changing but you have only a limited amount of steps uh, from minus 50 to plus 50 or you have the auto setting which is doing it on its own which might not always be working another thing that you can do is you can click in here and then use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down to change the value or what you can also do is you can click on this symbol here and then go with your mouse left or right to also change the value until you're happy with it in this case you can see here it's a bit difficult because when we move this over enough so it's touching the F we have the problem that also the line of the F is touching the line of the R so we have to figure out a different way how to do that and um, I will show you in a second what we could do with that uh, but before we're going to do that I want to show you tracking what's the difference between tracking and kerning tracking is changing the a space between all of the fonts that you have selected at the same time uh, I will actually go back to the other text here because here it's a little bit better visible so now uh, when I change as you can see all of them are going closer to each other or farther apart and again you can use your mouse wheel for that if you want to which is in that case even more precise of course you can also enter the number or mouse click here and what I forgot before you also have these uh, arrows here that go up and down uh, to be super precise with that and this as you see will change the space between all of the fonts which can be very useful in cases where you want to spread the font out so the design looks better or the text is more readable uh, so there's a lot of occasions how you would use that the next one now gonna switch back to the other text the baseline means that when you select a font uh, sorry when you select a letter this will push the letter above or below the baseline so the line that the all the other fonts are on so here I can for example use the F and then push it upwards and you can see that the other uh, font uh, the other letters are going to stay in place and only this one is moving so we could try to move it somewhere where it fits to the other uh, font or in this case where we have this uh, bonding here so it looks like it's one line that has been written still not a great design choice maybe use a different font or paint this line in here so it connects by hand so this is a pretty hard one to solve um, then we have the next setting which looks similar but is a different one it's called leading override and leading override only works when you have two lines of text like we had in the other text so let's switch back to that and what this does is right now I'm selecting all of the text and when I change this you can see that the lines are going closer to each other or further apart or even overlapping which could be a nice and fun way to design text 
can become very abstract but as you can see it can also look very cool and of course when you change text color for example you can change the text color individually for different uh, letters or different words so let's change this just this part here to blue and then we move them together so they overlap whoops I'm in the wrong menu let's click on all of them again so now when we move this like this you can see that they are strongly overlapping it can be an interesting design but at the same time you can still read what the text says so as you can see this can be used for design um, in very interesting ways and up on top you have the auto function which will set it back to um, the automatic setting that the text is coming with okay the next one up here is a little bit like we have seen before with italic but in this case you can decide the degree the font is bending you can also bend very extreme if you want to and you can also bend it in the other way so this can also be very helpful for designs for example if you have a design where you want to have the text look like it's moving along at speed you can use this uh, to bend the text in a certain direction of the movement so that can be very useful and another thing and of course as you can see here this is bending the text directly while the base is standing still which is very different from when you use uh, this kind of bending that you can use with the handles so that's the big difference here uh, and why this needs to be implemented because this influences the text on its own so that's important the next one is stretching the text out horizontal scale and vertical scale and see here this is stretching out but please observe this is different from our tracking because the font shape is changing so this is not directly changing the space between the shapes it's stretching it out like it, as if it was written on a on a uh, elastic sheet and then you stretch out the sheet so this is how this works and the same thing is happening here and you can see that this is done line by line it's not done by with all the text on its own so it's not just stretching the area you can see that this is growing from the start of every line um, to the top so um, this is spawn uh, font specific okay then the next parts that we have are very interesting again let's switch again over to the other text um, because i wrote here this text for a special case uh, so the first one are very specific i don't think you need to use them a lot the first one is standard lit, lit uh, i don't know even how to pronounce that in english literatures i think it is pronounced uh, so this means when you have complicated fonts and I actually have here um, I have here a document that I will link in the video description so this is for special cases like with FI where um, this point of the eye would mess up the design you can make it so the design is flowing into the point of the eye and connecting the F to the eye so this looks like one font of course can be problematic because now it looks like an H so um, not sure if you want to use that you have to be careful about that and of course the font has to offer this option and then we have here um, the wait sorry let's go here we have this one which is called contextual alternates and this is a little bit of the same thing let's switch back I will also link this line you can see here the same problem with F and L so from the design uh, the font would clash with the L so the font has an alternate version of the F that will keep it from clashing with the L and what this means here is that we have contextual alternates so contextual means if it's needed in the context the font will switch out the design of the single letter to another design that will not clash with the rest um, but this only works both of them only work when the font has this ability built into it it's not an um, automatic thing that is just working with any font let's see if this font can do it no it can't I have a different font here let's uh, change this first word 
to a different font. It's called Kaya. There we go. And now you can see if I change this setting. Again, it doesn't change. Okay, that's interesting. It should change uh, the first two letters. Let's see. Nope, this doesn't work. I don't know why. Let's write it. Ah, let's write it small. Maybe that's it. Yeah, you can see now it's changing. I will zoom in a little bit. So now it's changing and combining the first two to one font. But I think it looks like an H, so I'm not sure this is really good idea to do it like that. Um, let's go to the other choices. They are a lot more useful. And the first one is actually not that useful. And this is, for example, if you want to say first or square meter, stuff like that, for example, like here. The problem is this option doesn't really work that great in Affinity Photo, but we have an alternate version for that. So um, you can see here, it doesn't do anything. It should put the two up here so it says square meters, but it doesn't do that. Instead, what you should do is go over here and there it says superscript. And when you click that, it will put the two in small and up here, or you can go the other direction in small and down here. So both of them can be um, used with either superscript or subscript. So that can be very useful. Another thing that's very nice and it's actually working is that you can have these fractions here. When I click, it's combining it like this. So this can be uh, is a lot more readable. It looks a lot nicer than this here. And you actually know that this means a mathematical half, uh, while this could be meaning one or two or between one and two or something like that. So here you know, okay, this is mathematical. So that's very useful. And then we have another interesting thing. When you have text written like this, you can see here we have a lot of small caps. You can click here and turn it into all caps or you can click here and turn it into small caps, which is all caps, but in a small version, which is interesting. And you can use that, for example, uh, let's switch this back to caps. Oops, didn't do that. There we go. And now I can use this one in small caps. So it's still caps, but you can see that it's smaller uh, than the other text without having to resize the text without having an influence on the rest of the text. So that can be very useful. And the last part that we have here down here language is that you can decide what language this is. And this is mainly useful for uh, the language or spelling correction in the software. So it, knew, it knows in which direction, uh, in which language the words are actually written. Okay, that was a lot of information for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was interesting for you and see you in the next video. If you like my channel, maybe subscribe to me. I make two new videos per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get a lot of nice rewards uh, like feedback to your own uh, works. You can get my files with all the layers and a lot of other interesting benefits. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.